In today's video, I'm going to cover my sales pre-qualification process that I use to generate over $3 million a year in my concrete company. Make sure you watch all the way to the end if you want to use this pre-qualification process to not only save you time from wasting time with tire kickers, but also increase your sales rate so that way you sell more of the leads that reach out to you and increase the value of your business in your customer's eyes, which allows you to charge higher prices. Step one of the sales process is the why. This is not only the most important part of the sale, but it's also the hardest to nail down. 80% of the sale happens in this step alone, and mastering this step will literally give you an edge over 99% of your competition. First, you need to start off and figure out all the basics of the project. And this is the easy part. This is how you inch your way in to a deeper conversation with your customer. Start off by asking really common questions about the project. Like for instance, just say, tell me a little bit about your project and what you want me to know. Make sure you're keeping your questions open and vague. The, the reason is you want your customer to fill in all of the words that you want. You don't want to say yes and no questions because the goal is that you get your customer talking. Don't say something like, oh, so I'm assuming that you're reaching out for a concrete quote, right? That's a yes or no question. And that's not going to get your customer uh, really talking. So say things like, tell me a little bit more about your project. What things do you want me to know about your project? When do you want to get this project done? And ask the basics of the project just to at least have a pretty good understanding of overall what the customer wants done. Now the hard part. The hard part is drilling down and figuring out the why behind the product and finding out the true motivation for the customer doing the project. If someone's reaching out to you about a driveway, it's not because they just love concrete so much and they love throwing money out the window. That could be the case, but most likely there is a deeper motivation for them wanting to do the project. For instance, if a customer reaches out to you about a driveway, most likely they're concerned about something. Maybe when they invite their friends and family over to their house, they feel embarrassed and they feel like their driveway people instantly judge their house and they don't want to feel embarrassed when people pull up and see their house anymore. Or it could even be their neighbors, for instance. They feel like their neighbors might judge them because of the appearance that it gives their house and the look that it gives. Or another motivation on a driveway could be that they feel like it's unsafe. They could feel like the cracks might cause a tripping hazard and maybe they have an elderly parent or a family member or a loved one who may end up falling on the driveway if the driveway isn't fixed. There are so many reasons for why people might be doing a project, but the main goal that you have as the concrete contractor is to dig deeper and find the true motivation. One is that will actually build a lot more rapport because your customer will feel heard. And remember, people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. And so if you're getting to know your customer, they're getting to know you back, they like you because you're listening to them, and they're gonna trust you because you're trying to really figure out like their true motivation for the project so you can help them at the highest level possible. The key to this step is really listening to your customers and then nailing down when you hear something that you think there might be something deeper. Like for instance, if you ask, hey, you know, it sounds like you've been thinking about doing this project for a long time, and the customer says, yeah, I've been thinking about it for three years. And then you want to say something like, well, why now? Like what makes now the time that you're finally ready? They may say something like, man, I just feel like my driveway is a little unsafe and it, get, it keeps getting worse and worse every year. Instead of taking that at face value, the goal is that you really want to drill down and figure out the true pain. So you say, oh, it feels unsafe. Like, tell me more about that. Just remember that the deeper that you go and the more that your customer feels like you're listening to them, this will bring out their emotions and will cause them to be in a spending mood because it will remind them of all the pain of why they reached out to begin with. Step number two of the pre-qualification process is to go over the money. Now that your customer is more of an emotional mood and you've built some rapport, it's going to make this step so much easier talking about the numbers. Before you go into the money, make sure that you just do a really quick recap and make sure there's nothing else that your customer wants you to know about the project. What I typically say at this point is I go over everything that I think the customer said. Like for instance, I'll say, hey buddy, I really appreciate you sharing everything with me. From my perspective, is it okay if I just give you an idea of what I heard you say on this, on this call so far, just to make sure I fully understand what you're looking for? And Betty will say, yes, of course. And so I would say, okay, Betty, what I heard is that you've been thinking about doing your driveway for three years. And the reason why you really want to get it done now is you just feel like it's totally unsafe. The cracks are becoming way too big of a problem. You have a lot of heaving 
and you feel like if you wait any longer, someone could seriously get hurt on your driveway, and so you're looking to get this done as soon as possible. I just wanted to make sure, did I understand everything correct? Is there anything else that you want me to know about the project? That will give your customer one last chance to throw in anything else that she wants you to know, and again, you're demonstrating that you're truly listening and trying to understand their problem. Assuming that they say, nope, that sounds good, now it's time to talk about the numbers, and you want to bring this up in a friendly way. You want to say, okay, great, Betty, now that I fully understand your project and what you're trying to accomplish, is it okay if I give you a rough idea of what something like this might cost? And she'll say yes. I mean, our customers are anxious to get pricing from contractors. A lot of times, they're actually really nervous about this step, and they don't like it just as much as we don't like it. But at the same time, they want to know. They want to know if they can even do the project or not. And make sure before you go into pricing that you mention that this is just a rough estimate. I would say something like, okay, great, Betty. Um, I want to give you just kind of a rough ballpark of what this project might cost. Believe it or not, we do over 200 concrete projects a year. And so I've seen these types of driveways a lot. Let me, is it okay if I just give you a range of what something like this might be? And when Betty is anxious and wanting to hear the price, that's when I go into what I think a project like this might cost. And I know some of you are thinking, well, Tyler, what if I don't know exactly what this project costs? And that's a great point. The whole point is to not know the exact estimate of what the customer is going to get. The question is to give them a range based on your previous jobs that you've done and based on the description that the customer gave you. You might also want to request pictures from your customer. I do that so that way I have a picture of their project area before I hop on the phone with them. Or you could even look up their property on Google Earth just to kind of get an idea of what they're looking for. When I go over numbers, I always start with the highest range first. So for instance, if I'm looking at pictures and the customer told me it's roughly an 800 square foot driveway, even though most of the times for 800 square foot driveways, I might charge about like 12 to 13, 14,000, depending on the specs and what they want to do. Although that's what I typically charge, I always start out with a much higher number. And what this will do is it will pre-frame the customer because the first number that they ever hear is always gonna be the number that they stick with when they hear a lower number later. It'll actually make them feel like they're getting a good deal. So I would say is, okay, Betty, uh, now that I understand more about your project and I think that we're on the same page, we're gonna talk about numbers. And then what I would do is I would say, so Betty, if we were to re replace your driveway and we were to really knock this thing out of the park, I'm saying like make it really as strong as we can put extra road base in there, make the concrete extra thick, put a sealer, and really drive this thing home and make sure that it will never heave up on you like that, it did that again. We're probably looking in the range of like 18 to $22,000 for your driveway. And then shut up, don't talk here. Let the customer process that in their head. It's gonna feel uncomfortable and that's okay, but that is the point. The point is not to make the customer feel uncomfortable, but the point is to make sure that you give them adequate time to really process what's going on. After it's been like five seconds of waiting, now is the time to finally go in and if they haven't said anything yet, be like, all right, Betty, what do you think? Just keep it simple. There's gonna be one of two options. Betty will either say that that price sounds great and then congrats, you just sold the job for way more than you typically sell for. And I'm not saying to rip people off, if you're selling a job for way more than what you would typically sell it for, I mean, do some extras for the customer, like seal their concrete or put a cure on, curing agent on. Maybe do extra rebar, maybe do thicker concrete or bigger base. It's never gonna hurt by doing something that is stronger than what you typically do. And so if Betty thinks that your top price is good, that means that you've just literally made more money because you shot for a higher number first. And let's say if Betty does what most people do, which is totally okay, and they're like, oh man, I don't know if I'm really willing to spend that much. At that point, I'd be like, well, that's okay. That's if we really knock the driveway out of the park. And that's if we're doing like a lot of things, like a lot of extra road base, thicker concrete, more rebar and all that. Is it okay if I share with you what a pretty standard driveway would cost? And at that point, Betty will be relieved to hear that you have an option that will actually save her money. And again, the reason why we start with a higher number first is because now she thinks even your normal pricing is actually getting a good deal. You say, well, Betty, most time when I do driveways, and if you're looking for just that standard driveway that's still going to last a really long time and look super beautiful, you're probably looking in the range of like twelve dollars to $14,000 for this. And at that point, Betty will either be super excited because she'll be like, man, you just basically saved me $8,000 from what I thought I was going to have to spend, or she might say, 
oh man, like even that lower range, like there's no way I'm spending twelve to fourteen thousand dollars on my driveway. And either option is great. Option one is great because you just made a sale. Option two is great because that means that you didn't have to drive all the way over to your customer's house to figure out that they were never going to buy from you no matter what you said to them. So if they liked one of your pricing options, it's time to move into step three. All right, and step number three is called the truth. What I would ask Betty now that she's agreed to liking one of my price points is I would simply just ask, all right, Betty, what do you think the next step should be? And at that point, she'd probably be like, well, I'm not sure. Do you need to come look at the project or what is your next step of your process? And the reason I'm doing this is to give control of the customer because they still might feel a little bit of uncomfortable from the number. But what this does is put the customer at ease and they're still in control because remember, people like to buy, but they hate being sold. So make them feel like you're just aiding them in the buying process. And then what I would say is, yes, exactly. The next step would be for me to just come out there, verify everything that we talked about over the phone is accurate and get you signed up for the project. Does that sound like that would interest you? And at that point, she would be very excited that you're going to come out and try to get everything signed up. What I always like to also ask at this time is I say, okay, great, Betty, that's awesome. Hey, before I come out there, I just want to ask you something real quick. If I come out there and I tell you everything the same exact way that I told you over the phone, like for instance, if I come out there and your driveway is what I pictured and it's going to cost that $12,000, what would happen next? And the reason that I asked this is because a lot of times people still aren't sold, but they want you to come out there because they may feel like they get a better deal. And the problem with this is you're going to be doing the same thing. You might come out of there and have a come out to their house and have a whole nother conversation all about the same thing and they still wouldn't have bought from you. So sometimes they'll say, well, man, if you come out to my house and tell me everything you told me over the phone, and it sounds like we've got a deal, like I'm really excited to get my driveway done. And that's exactly what you want to hear. But sometimes the customer might say something like this. Well, if I came out there, um, you know, I'm going to need to get three other bids or I'm going to need to go over it with my wife or whatever their excuse may be. And that's when you know that they may not actually be sold and it might require a little bit of further digging. If they need to get other quotes, I typically actually ask them to get the other quotes before they call me back. What I would say is, well, you can use this phone conversation as as my estimate for you. And so that way you can compare my company and the others based on what we've talked about over the phone. If they come out and you like them better than me and you like their process better than ours, then I would suggest that you go with them. But if you like me after you've talked to them and you think that my pricing is fair compared to what other people are charging, that's when it would be a good idea for you to call me back and I'll come out to your property and we'll get you signed up. And so again, the whole point of this pre-qualifying process is to give the people the information that they need and that they want and save you from the time of going out to a customer's house that literally is going to be a complete waste of time because we all know as concrete contractors we're all limited on time and wasting time is never a good thing the last thing that you need to do in this step that can really save your butt just in case things go wrong is you want to pre-frame that this is just a phone call and that things can be different when you go out there in person so i typically say something like this hey betty is it okay if i come out to your house and i realize that the driveway that we were talking about is a lot bigger than what we expected for instance i see something that's going to be a game changer is that okay if i just call a timeout and i just be honest with you about what's happened and the customer will of course say yes because they want to be fair right that's only fair that if you're allowed to call a timeout and tell them the truth of the situation what this will avoid is if you go out to the customer's house and you look at it and you're like, oh my God, I told them this was going to be a $12,000 driveway, but this is probably actually closer to like a $16,000 driveway. That way you can bring it up in person. You can say, well, Betty, remember when I told you over the phone that I might have to call a timeout if there's a game changer? Well, see, I measured this driveway and it's actually like 20% bigger than what we talked about on the phone. And so your estimate is going to be about 20% more. And again, that will just save you from looking like the bad guy because no one ever likes to feel like they have a deal and you come out and then you're the bad guy telling them that things have actually changed. So this will kind of save your butt from that happening. So after you figured all this out, your customer says they're ready to go. It's time to move on to step number four. Step number four is called decision makers. On this step, it's actually super simple. You just want to make sure that everyone that needs to be there to hear you and sign the contract when you get there in person is going to be available. 
this can be a little bit of a sensitive topic so you need to make sure that you say this in a little bit of a sensitive way like for instance if you're talking to a husband and you say hey is your wife going to be there i want to make sure that she's there so that way you know we're all on the same page he might take that as an insult saying like well hey i'm the head of this household i don't need my wife to be there to make decisions so you might want to come at it from a little bit more of a backdoor approach i would say something like hey you know customer um if it were me and i was married which it sounds like you are and I made this decision without talking to my wife, I would be in a lot of trouble. And then I would laugh, I'd say, <laughs> and then he would laugh too. And I'd say, so I'm not sure if it's the same in your household, but do you think it would be important for your wife to be there too, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page before we move forward? This will be a good opportunity for the husband or for the wife or for whoever to really think about if there's anyone else on board that needs to be at this sales call, who needs to be at this in-person estimate, because the, the goal is that you get out there and you don't want the customer to come up with some stupid excuse. Like for instance, if you go out there and say, hey buddy, you know, this 800 square foot driveway, it's gonna be the $12,000 uh, like what we talked about. And then all of a sudden she says something like, oh man, that's great, but man, I better run it by my husband or you know, I gotta run it by my dog or my cat or whatever stupid freaking excuse that your customer gives you. The whole point of this step is to try to eliminate that from happening right from the get-go. So just make sure that all the decision makers that need to be at the estimate are actually there. And that way you can answer everyone's concerns. Because we all know that what might be important to one person might not be important to their spouse and vice versa. And so you wanna make sure that you get everyone there so you can handle everyone's concerns and questions. So that way it can eliminate all the need uh, for any check-ins and it will highly increase your sales rate. All right, so once you've locked that down, there's only one last step that you need to do on this pre-qualifying call, and that's in step number five. All right, step number five is optional, but I highly recommend it, and it's to charge a consultation fee. And when I say charge a consultation fee, this is the way that I always recommend framing it. I would say something like, okay, buddy, that's awesome. It sounds like, you know, your husband's gonna be there, you guys are both on board, we're talking about the 800 square foot driveway for $12,000. And uh, I just wanna mention one last thing just in case. And Betty will say, okay, what's that? You'll say, well, we do charge a consultation fee, but the good news is it's already included in the price of that project that I told you. So the only reason that this consultation fee would apply is if I came out to your house, we talked about the same exact thing of what we've already talked about on the phone, and I consulted you over your project and gave you advice, but then you didn't move forward. And at that time, Betty would be like, oh, okay, no problem because she's because she plans on moving forward. Here is where a big red flag would come in. Is Betty would say like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I don't wanna pay a consultation fee. And I'd say, oh, well, that's great. Like, because you're gonna move forward, Betty, and like, we're already on the same page. Like, you're not gonna have to pay a consultation fee because I'm coming out and I'm not doing any consulting. I'm coming out and I'm just getting you signed up for your project. And either at that point she'd say, oh, okay, that makes sense, and her nerves would calm down. Or if she's still super freaked out by the consultation fee, that's a huge red flag that she's trying to basically make you go through hoops. And she really just wants to come out and meet you in person, but she's still not sold on the project. And so at this point, you could either go into more sales mode, or it's a, it's a huge red flag that Betty is the typical tire kicker. So this happens all the time. And this is why it's optional. If you're desperate for, for work and need work, you may not want to do this because you could scare off maybe like 2% of people that are super serious about this. But if you're really serious about saving time and not spending time with anyone who's not serious, this is a great thing to add on. Because anyone who's willing for you to pay to come out there and consult with them is a super serious customer. And that means that they're like 99% sure that they're gonna be moving forward. And that's my five step pre-qualification process. If you do this, you will see a big increase in not only your sales, but also a decrease in the time that you're spending on customers who never would have bought from you to begin with. If you like this video, please hit like button down below and also subscribe to my channel so that way you'll be notified every single time that I come out with another video on another concrete business tip. That's all I had for you in today's video. I'll talk to you later.